What is up guys? Joe Holland here. I got a special one for you today. I am here where they make my favorite ice fishing trap. I'm here at Jack Traps. I think I'm in Monmouth, Maine. I don't even know. We're way out in the sticks, out in the country where you'd never even believe this place exists. But this is the home right here where they've been making these jack traps for years. I think since day one. There's also an amazing ice fishing shop inside. I'm gonna give you guys the inside look to how they make these traps, all the different models they have, and everything they have in the store. You're gonna meet Sean, the owner. You're gonna meet everybody in there today and take a look at this one. This is the one I plan on putting into use this year to catch that big fish I've been after. Look at this thing. <laughs> that is a mega, mega jack trap. That's as big as they get right here. When this flag goes up, you can see the flag they're running, the American flag on that one. And that reel starts spinning. That's when you get excited. That's going to be a big fish. That's pretty cool. All right, let's check it out. Pretty exciting once you get through these doors. This is where dreams are made. This is a legacy product that you will have your whole life. It's pretty cool coming here. I know people are really excited when they come in. Oh, there comes Otis. There he is. There's the man right there. Sean, what is happening? Guys, this is Sean. Making traps. Sean, making traps for you. You at home, this might be your actual trap that you get right here. It's not this one. Sean is in charge here. He's the owner of Jack Traps. Good to see you, bud. The guy in the store is buying this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they do custom he's traps. Watching. Yeah, they do custom <laughs> traps right here while you wait. Whatever color you want. We can swap them around or we can put them together. So this one's headed out the door. All right, guys, so this is Casey. I actually prank called Casey last year. Did we film that? I can't remember. No. All right, Sean and I were out ice fishing. We were on the lake. You had to run and get your phone. That's right. Because I, I couldn't call for my phone. She yeah. would have known. But you didn't have it with you. So yeah. you ran back to the house, got your phone, and then called her, or called the shop. Yeah. She answered the phone. Yeah, what did I say? I said something like, my, my traps, my flags wouldn't go off. Yeah, they're all. Someone yeah. told me they're guaranteed to catch this. <laughs> if, if I put a bait on it and put it in the water, that the flag was going to go up. And the flags <laughs> won't go up. I, there's something wrong with these things. And then finally, she's like, "Well, maybe you just haven't had a bite yet." And I was like, "Oh, you have to do that." <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't call it fishing. They would That's call right. It catching. <laughs> but this is my first time meeting her, and she was such a great sport. Thank you for being such a great sport on the phone. And yeah. you did a great job. You did not get fired, obviously. Yeah, no. You're still here. I was like. I got off the phone and e me and Ethan were here and I was like, I hope I didn't come off like a little... No, you are not yeah, You know? <laughs> no, but You did a great job because customer service nowadays is really hard with customers and I was being that customer that was like, these traps aren't any good because I haven't caught a fish in 10 minutes. <laughs> Just as he's about to hang up on him, I chimed in. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sean's like, this is your boss. <laughs> that was a test. Calm down, calm <laughs> and it's kind of been an inside joke ever since. Good. <laughs> Let's start over here. This is our smallest model. It's basically four sizes. You get a 20 inch, 26 inch, 31 inch, and then the big bob, 43 inch. And then you can get them in two styles. There's two uh, real sizes. And then a wide variety of different stains and flag colors and line colors. So by the time you figure all that in, there's literally thousands and thousands and thousands of iterations that that you can pick from and what you want. So when you get out on the ice and you're with a big group of people, there's a pretty good chance that you made something that that the other guy's not gonna have when you come in here and you pick it up. These are the first ones. This is a 20 inch, um, the smallest trap. Everybody kind of thinks these are like good for panfish or brook trout just because they're small. They can catch anything. Oh yeah, I caught you some know, big pike on them. They, they're pike fishing, tog fishing. As far as the size of the fish, there's no difference. It's more about visibility and snow depth. When you get a lot of snow in the ice and this is sitting in the hole and you gotta dig down to get your reel underwater, you reach a point where your hole is above the trap mm -hmm. so you can't see it. You know, that's about how high your flag is. And then just putting them long distances away, they're a little harder to see because they're not so tall. So um, we sell a lot of them for kids just because they're smaller, yeah. easier for the kid to handle. But I say a lot of times, you know, you want something 
the kid's still gonna have this trap 30 years from yeah. now when they're a lot bigger. So you might wanna get something that's a little more versatile, mm -hmm. but. They seem to have a little bit easier trip for trout Yeah, stuff. they will trip a little lighter. It is um, on the back, it's a lighter gauge spring steel than the rest. Um, so that will give you a little lighter set. Yeah. And you'll do like a three or a four inch pool or just the we three? We do them both. Yeah. So all the traps, uh, except the big bob, you can get both real sizes. And this is the only one we don't do in the cross style, yeah. just because with the shorter size and you put the cross on it, uh, the wings are actually go out beyond the trap itself. So Yeah, I have a couple, I think I have two sets of the what I call the trout traps, even though I use them for everything. And I really like them early season. And I like them for packing in. Like if I'm bringing them right. on my back, right. I love these. I mean, it does make you carry around 520s and you carry around 531s, and you know the difference. <laughs> There's a big difference. Right. Yeah, so. and and I do like them when I am around finicky or finesse fishing because they will trip a lot easier. Right. Um, you could set your tripper on anything, but they, these ones definitely with the lighter gauge flag. Yeah. You run you run the bait band, which we'll show you in a little mm. bit um, with this trap. And like yeah. you said, you can fish with the. 10 inch shiner yeah. and just the same as you can with any other one I'm going to show you so and if you don't want people seeing your trap either where you're set up right. stealth, I've, stealth I've, I've honestly done been stealth with these before where I don't want somebody seeing where I'm fishing I'll use these things little jack so these here would be basically the same trap oh, okay there's just yeah. you just get the bigger four inch reel I think these are what you have it is yeah I got the fours because I was pike fishing the biggest thing here is the added line capacity you're gonna have about 400 feet versus 200 on a three. The other thing is, is it's a gear ratio. As this reel spins one rotation, it's letting out more line than a three inch. You know, for the fish, it's gonna be a lot smoother as they pull line. They're less apt to feel it. I was gonna, I was gonna see how you. I, I, I was gonna see how you did that. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's got a little lean to Short it. Short girl problem. I know, the, I know the feeling, I have the same problem, short girl problems. <laughs> so here we got a 26 standard. So these are the trap we sell the most of. It's kind of a good average size, catching all around fish. Your average snow height you're gonna find within Maine, New England. This is sufficient enough. You go up north a little, a lot, you might wanna get in something a little bigger, but these are, these are the ones that uh, really keep us going. Probably about half of what we sell are these 26 standards. And uh, if you head over there, you get the same thing in the forage reel. So the 26 is the first set of jack traps I had ever gotten. My One of my girlfriends in high school was working at L.L. Beans. She was able to pick me up a set with a wooden pack basket at the time of my first jack traps ever. And they're the 26 standards, three inch spools. From Beans. Yep, still have them to this day. Most of them in the early days, they people got them at Beans. Yep. That's where they were all headed. Uh, you know, early on, he was just doing that in his basement, so. Unless somebody knew, you know, went there and hung out with him for a little while and got a set of traps, and yeah. they had to go to L.L. Bean or Huzzies or places like that. So, yeah. you know, back in the early days. Back in the early days. Stay tuned to the set video, guys, because Sean's going to give you a little history of the company, too, and talk about those early days after we get through the traps and some of the stuff here in, in the store. Getting in this middle row, these are all 31-inch. Same deal. Uh, three inch reels here, you jump over the other rack, four inch reels, and then this wall here, you're gonna find, basically it's all the same trap, it's just in that cross style. So these fold out into an X. It's really personal preference. Uh, what you're into, some people don't care, some people care a lot, you know. This, this you got kind of two moving parts with the standard, just one fold out a little easier to handle. This is probably, there's a little less wood there. Uh, they do pack up a little tighter. So, um, when you go to the four inch reel, these are a little beefier. They just, they get the one by three quarter instead of a three quarter by three quarter wing, which these would be the same wing setup as the big bob. So just a little beefier trap. Uh, these call the East Grander. And then you get into the big bobs which is, this is for when you want to put them out about a half a mile. Or you're on moose heads, the wind's blowing, and all the snow's coming, filling your hole in. And they sit down far enough in the hole so it doesn't really fetch up your reel. And it's high enough up on the tripper where it'll tend to stay out of the snow. So when you get in those conditions 
and your trap won't go off, uh, these these won't have that problem. That's the trap right there. I caught that big brookie on last year in the blizzard. Pretty much the same one. And it's, I mean, I'm 5'10". <laughs> there so. you go. With the flag up, it's, it's up there. This is our 26 inch cross. So, like I said before, same center, just how the wings fold out. These tend to be a little more popular, like Massachusetts, Connecticut area, I yeah. find, um, for whatever reason. So, this one's just a clear coat on the wood. So, nothing fancy there, it's just polyurethane. And then you have the dark center which we do the dark walnut stain just on the middle piece. It's nice when you got that darker piece standing in the snow, just a little bit easier to see. This would be the all dark, which is that same walnut stain, just all three pieces. And then here you have what's called gun stock. So it's just, it's a standard Minwax stain. That's the name of the stain. Um, it's kind of a, I like to call it an orangish brown tint. This is what we call the Arctic chard. Uh, we basically just run a torch over the wood real quick. It makes the grain pop. So everything's a little different depending on the piece of wood. You know, they're all going to look different. Um, some, depending on what the grain is, are, they're pretty unique. And then we have what we call the neons, which is just your pretty straightforward. You got black, green, blue, orange, and pink. And uh, when you order them online, we'll send them to you, matching flag, matching line. Um, if you come in here or order over the phone, you can put whatever you want on them. So you could put a red flag and neon green line on a on a mm. blue stained uh, frame. And this is the black jack. This is the black flag. This is black. The black jack with the Jolly Roger. That's pretty popular. We sell a lot of those. And what was Chubb running? Black with orange. He's got uh, black with the yep. Yeah, yeah, like that like one. Those. Wayne's got them too. That was what. Uh, the beer there can. There was some confusion on. Oh, that's at, at right. The they the, both had the same trap. At the end of the day, whose yeah. traps was whose? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chubb thought he was missing one, and he was accusing Wayne of taking it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the different flag options. So you got the specialty one. Those are an extra two bucks a piece. You got your solids. Uh, and this is just standard in the price and then we do a ton of these two tones which is kind of gives you the best of both worlds because when you're on the lake and you got a dark color it's great with the snow but when you get the shoreline behind you it can kind of blend in um, that's where a bright flag comes in handy so you run something like an orange and black you get a little bit of both uh, plus they're kind of unique so like you said when you get out with a bunch of people and you go to your trap you know it's yours so you got your uh, your Wisconsin color is that, is that the green the green bay color yeah. you got your main main flag right there that's one of my favorites we get a lot of like uh lobstermen come in oh, and they yeah. want we get like because this flag's supposed it's the way it's sewed it it really as as a general rule we only put it a certain way but mm -hmm. some guy's got buoy colors or whatever and he wants to match we put the flag on upside down oh, that's a great idea uh, but yeah so we got we got a lot of these there's a lot we've had over the i mean as you can see, you get all these colors and then you start splitting them. You got a lot of options. So Over here is all the line colors. So these you can buy the spools. Um, they come in 450 foot spools or uh, 3,000 foot spool. Um, but also when you buy your traps, these are all the color varieties we have. Uh, dark green, black, tan, red. Neon green, orange, pink, and blue. Um, this yellow we don't offer on the traps. This was kind of a, a mistake run on the fact of the line company. So we got these fools. When those are gone, they'll be gone. But people will like that color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you order your traps, you kind of, if you call us or you come here in the store, you can build any combo you want of all those. And aside from the traps, we kind of carry anything you need for ice fishing we might not have every brand but we kind of have something in each one we tend to stick with stuff that more that we would use versus uh just carrying some of everything and selling you a piece of junk 
these are kind of your your options for stuff to store your traps in or use when you're traveling these are all individual trap sleeves so these you get five of these whatever you're putting them in whether it be a box or you just chuck them in your sled like joe does <laughs> yeah, i've been getting better i've been getting better <laughs> that's the end of that trip i said i'm starting to act like you and just throwing all my stuff in the sled um you know they get beat up when you travel with them yeah. not sitting in a hole in the lake so uh just you're spending a lot of money on these things you want them to last a lifetime it keeps all that metal hardware from just tearing up the wood um, so it's good to separate them like that from there there's different options on what you can do as far as a pack basket or a backpack style bag these here are just like a backpack style trap bag and it comes with a pocket and if you buy them in the sleeve slide those in and kind of cinch that, cinch that up and that's pretty neat. People like that, uh, just a little less bulky than a pack yeah. basket. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of extra storage room like yeah. a basket will. These are all kind of like those sleeves. Uh, we call them a five sleeve grommet bag. These are actually not on the website. Uh, you can call an order or come here in the store. Same thing there, you get all the colors and then you got five sleeves, they're all hooked together and you get mm -hmm. people and they want. Right. Uh, uh, blue red blue or yeah. uh, I mean, there's a million varieties you can have it gets complicated like uh, uh, yeah so like these are a two-tone orange and green um, but it's basically those five sleeves and they're just all hooked together with the shoulder strap again you don't get the extra storage but uh, people like it because it tends to be a little bulkier and they can just chuck it in the sled I like with, it because like like the, the set that you put together for me is with the 20 inch goes in the five sleeve grommeted bag then i could actually take that bag and either throw it over my shoulder or i can put it in my snowmobile case behind the seat so right. it fits perfectly in yeah, there you were telling me you needed a little case carrying yeah. case so you could throw them <laughs> in your box on the sled and uh while well, you're snowmobile and i said well guess what i got the perfect thing <laughs> he <here."> did do <laughs> and then there's the pack basket which is kind of the go-to for everybody um we sell hundreds and hundreds of these things uh, the Loring Pack Basket, they're highly sought after in the last few years. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to and, come by. And why is that? Uh, it's just because they don't break? Yeah, they're indestructible. I mean, these things, you can literally just pull them back and pop right back. Your gear, you know, you run, yeah. you run it over the truck, your, your gear in it might get a little squished, but the basket's yeah. going to be just fine. <laughs> so you do that to a wooden basket. Here, you got your liner, and then it's all individual trap pockets. Nice. So even if you're not running the sleeves, it does help separate them and uh, keeps them protected. So, but, so you have individual liners for each right. trap? Right. So, and then if you run the, the trap sleeves on your traps in those pockets, in 30 years, they're going to look like a, just like they did the day you brought them out of here. So that's kind of the options as far as stuff to keep your traps in that we offer um and with those pack baskets it looks like you got several different so there's is there two, <coughs> two different color loring there's a, there's a lot of variety um he's having trouble this year with all the supply chain stuff getting the black material okay these two left that's it two left in a, and then in the 24 inch and you got so you got like a green black you got the green which yeah, is what so, i have so what we do have basically what it's going to be the rest of the season is these two options okay and then you can put whatever color liner you want cool. on it yeah, it looks like you got several different color liners now different sizes on those uh yeah the, the we we did us there used to be a 17 inch basket too that would go with the 20s yeah again something we're not going to see this year they've yeah. been just uh with the popularity of the baskets and his ability to get materials and help and all that stuff mm -hmm. to make them, it's been limited on what we can get. So no 17 inch baskets, very little black. So, and then there's a 24 inch and a 28 inch. 24, so, 24. so we have liners for the 24s and the 28s. We can make the 17s. Um, we carry augers that's kind of become all electric. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got the Jiffy Model 30. We stick with old reliable, but uh, aside from that one, I don't carry many gas augers anymore. It's just what brands are you carrying? Uh, for? We get Ions and Strike Master. Um, the Ions are a little pricier. Uh, they were kind of the first one in the game, um, but the Strike Master is the one. I, 
we got hundreds of those in, mm -hmm. in their storage building, ready to go. That's the one that everybody wants. So nice. uh, they seem to be doing the best job, as far as I'm concerned, with the uh, with the auger stuff these days. And so. then a lot more people are going to the drills, right? With the hand and drills, those, and it looks like you have some of those too. We, I carry them all. The Jiffy, especially the last couple of years, where it's been so hard to get stuff. Yeah, you just kind of get whatever you can get. The Eskimo pistol bit and the Strike Master light flight. Those are the big two. I like the Strike Master personally. The way it cuts, it's unbelievable. Mm. You know. I was the first day I tried one, I would never go back. So <laughs> it was it was instantly sold. So this is the new forty volt light. Oh wow. It's got the, yeah, the composite I seen that, yeah. the composite bit. Uh, just like the light flight. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So this would be this this is the eight inch light flight. Oops. Avalanche. So this you put on your drill. Yeah. Ice scoop. Yeah, yeah, these these are the custom Skinners. ice scoop. So these, we used to make something very similar. We would buy skimmers, mm -hmm. cut them in half, roll the chisel on the end, have them powder coated. But the skimmers you buy, they're cheap. You know, yeah. This metal, you could literally push on it, fold it over with your thumb. So we got a local guy doing this now. These are all cut out with a laser. It says <laughs> jack traps That's right in there. Awesome. Um, and you could probably beat somebody to death with this thing. <laughs> and it's not gonna fold over. It's, it's rugged. And same deal, you got all the different color varieties, all the same stains that we talked about. So when you come on and you build a package deal, you know, you get your basket, your traps, skimmer, and the jig sticks we do, you kind of match everything up. Um, these two, these are just kind of a, they make a good little like Christmas gift thing. Mm. Um, the old school wooden jig stick. They're good for, you know, you want to do like panfish chicken. You get in a school of perch, you got your line out. You're in this. You're in the school. As you're pulling perch up, you're just hand lining them. Yeah. You throw the jig back down, and it's gonna go right back the same depth. So yeah. it's a little easier for that kind of thing versus a reel. That's the old school right there. That's like yeah. Before like, before the fishing pole was invented, yeah. that's how they did it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch up on the wall there. Oh yeah, that's awesome. The Eskimo shacks, pop up shacks. Pretty much, I stick with Eskimo. They tend to be the better ones that I've seen for the price. Um, there's a lot of different ones, clam, otter, but pretty much just stick with Eskimo. So we got the 250s, 450s, 650s, 850s, all the different sizes. I think you run the 450, right? They I got the 450, like, yeah. And then uh, we got the 949 insulated, un uninsulated, quick fish, uh, they're a little smaller. Those are kind of more economical and, and that's what I carry for the shacks. Like them or no? Have you tried them? A little fold out chair. Yeah. <laughs> people, people Did you like it, Pat? No. No. A little husky gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fella for that chair. They yeah. call it X. It's like I'm wearing a thong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pat's a big boy. He's bigger than I am. We, last year was the first year I brought him in, and I, it was like he blanked and they were gone. I couldn't. Yeah. And people were like, I've been looking all over for this thing. The table though's handy. Yeah. I think that's new this year. That's pretty sweet. I, but you got I, buddy heaters, hand yeah, holders, paint buckets. I'm sure you sell some bait buckets. bait buckets. So you got full size five gallons here. You got insulated. Yeah, insulated. you got the the small, small. cheapos. Yeah, four bucks. Yeah. Insulated like, for that. These are like a little. So it is nice to have a small bait bucket, like yeah. when you're out on the lake and you're running around in your trap. So this fits if you can find them anymore. The old metal coffee can. Oh, that'd be perfect. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, what is it? Chock full of nuts. Yeah. I think they still do the metal okay. coffee can. But this is made to fit. Jeez, that's a great one. fit in those. This is something uh, my mother had had one since I can remember yeah. when I was like a little kid. Uh, I think I'm gonna add that. And to the it was like, I remember when I was a kid, like my my parents and all their buddies when they were out east fishing, they all had these and they yeah. called them their purse. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and they would have that in the coffee can. This was in a metal coffee yeah, can. Yeah, that's a great so idea. So I still I ha still have one somewhere that it was like like I said it's been it's in a Maxwell House metal which they don't make anymore they're yeah. all those plastic tubs but if you can find them that's what those go to and then what do you keep in here is this where you practice and yeah, you practice do, with your jig do, rods we do laps in here <laughs> this is our hot tub <laughs> <laughs> we got smelts and uh emerald chiners which is a eastern silvery minnow actually do not use a real emerald chiner yeah. <laughs> not legal not legal uh then we got regular golden chiners small medium large extra large jumbos 
uh, usually a couple different sizes of suckers, depending on what's available. Good size so, pike bait, too. Yeah, so we keep, I don't want to brag, but out of a lot of bait shops, we probably got some of the best selection of bait going. Uh, mm. When I'm fully stocked, I have big tanks out back, too, for storage that run just like this one. And uh, I have probably 60,000 fish on hand, wow. so. Um, there's times when it's a little stressful, like uh, if the power goes out or something. <laughs> <laughs> Need a backup generator. Right. <laughs> so this is just kind of our like uh, leader and auger blade wall and some other auger accessories. So this is kind of all pre-tied leaders. You got hooks, swivels, sinkers, and all kinds of different lines. We tend to run the Maxima. That's what all our pre-tied stuff that comes from us is made with. Um, and then we got some wire stuff if you're pike fishing. Yeah, yeah, That's we a good did. We brought in a lot of the uh, the red hook stuff. People like that. Yeah. Um, the beads. People are into that kind of stuff. So this is a lot of uh, we brought the people what they asked for. And then as far um, as blades, it looks like you're covered for several different makers. Yeah, we got kind of all, everything going, and hand augers too. So nice. should I'm not saying we'll have everyone, but. You, uh, you need a blade, we should have it. These are all sabiki rigs. Mm -hmm. So that's um, for like going saltwater smelting on the river, it's Kennebec. Mm -hmm. And then these are the easy connect systems. So that's what I've been using. Like this one's for the light flight. Mm -hmm. It just gives you a quick connect from your drill mm -hmm. instead of having to take it out of the chuck every time. Yeah. Um, this one here is a pistol bit laser, which this one actually works with that G2 bottom that, yeah. that uh, Joe's running. So if you get your hands on a a G2 lower ion, um, you can run one of these and go 10 inch on your on your power drill. That out. But this is like an ice anchor tool yeah. that will work with any ice anchor, and it's made oh, sweet. with the the spot. That's to, pretty cool. To click into the quick connect. So yeah. I stocked these just because I thought it was a little more versatile. Yeah, yeah. Where anybody, any shack you're running, yeah. you can buy this and run it with the quick, like the quick connect. So. Yeah. Um, these are again like the same idea as the skimmer you got to find the top one <laughs> <laughs> uh, same bottom it's just a little cheaper version just metal no chipper yeah um, still strong though yeah, yeah yeah very rugged so quite a lot different these are the same as what we showed you earlier big boy that's so, pretty sweet less than and over about 40 inches yeah so if you don't want your back to hurt yeah. you're skimming your hole out um, we we actually started with this one and we had a lot of people asking for something a little smaller that would fit in their, their basket better. So we started doing both. They're both equally as popular, but you know, it's not a cheap skimmer, but it's high quality. Should last you a long time. We got the sleds. Um, I carry jet sleds, uh, the smaller ones. These are tend to be a little lighter weight. Um, we do sell the accessories for them, but I tend to recommend Running a jet sled, like when you're walking by hand, they're not as thick as the other ones. So you run this behind a machine, especially if you don't have the runners on it, one trip and the bottom's got holes in it. So we got those in three sizes, like that one there, Junior. This is like a good sled for a little kid yeah. and like send them down the hill and they fly. <laughs> My daughter loves it. <laughs> but uh, so we got those in the three sizes. And these are great for people walking mostly, walking, right? Yeah, I would recommend. You can set them up, you can buy the runners. Um, they have a couple different hitches, get the cover, and you could, uh, you could use it, but it's not going to last as long. Mm. Uh, as well. And as what I'm about to show you over here, the oh. otter, and you're going to have almost as much money into it by the time. Oh, no kidding. Uh, otter sleds, these I would recommend if you're going to put them behind any sort of four-wheel or snowmobile. They're just a lot thicker. You're gonna pay a little more for the sled. We offer some package deals, which you get the sled hitch, cover, runner. And like I said, once you get into that, you save a lot of money getting it all. And, and it's not too far off from what you're gonna be spending on the jet sled. And it's gonna last you a lot longer. So These are rugged, they're I, roto molded. I, I definitely recommend Otter if you're going behind the machine. Yeah. And then you, we do sell all the accessories. If you got an Otter sled and you don't have the runners or you Need a cover. Um, nice. We got all that stuff too. You can buy individually. Variety of hats. If you wanna. Yeah, that's cool. 
walk around representing your favorite ice fishing traps. Uh, different sweatshirts. This is actually a new one. We've done this in the gray and we're gonna start doing black. So this has been the classic. If you've been in, you've seen, this is what we've carried for years, but mm. now we're gonna have it in the black. Uh, T-shirts, long sleeve shirts. This one here is uh, got smell. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tim Jack on the back. Nice. And a lot of gloves. Oh yeah. We bring a lot of gloves in. Uh, these socks, there. She talked me into kitting them, and then I stuck my hand inside of it. It's pretty oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> Jeez, I don't want to do that now. <laughs> it worked for me. And they've been pretty popular, so we keep them there. These are actually, we haven't got any in yet, and we brought these from home. So, this one's Mark's. <laughs> and this is, uh, one of these is mine, one's Candace's. So you could see them on the video, but they're hoping they're coming soon. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, these are kind of the, when you see somebody on the ice with this thing, you know they're in the club. Tim Jack had one he wore. Uh, had it about 40 years. Same lady that made these made wow. this. So kind of a miscellaneous stuff. You got body heaters, fillet knives, uh, grease kits for maintenance on the traps. We'll show you a little bit more about that. Uh, body heater accessories. These are like uh, green lights cool. for smelting. You can hook them to a battery. Nice. Your body heater hoses. Yeah, this is if you want to run uh, 20 pounds. One of these and these, and you can run it on the 20 pound. Oh, nice. You got the filter. I haven't seen these. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea when you run the 20 pound tank. Yeah. They, they recommend you run the filter with it. Um, I guess the propane's not as clean. Uh, I don't know the specifics on that, but uh, some broad cases. The. Uh, Jig rod, jaw jacket kind of stuff. People like those. A bunch more gloves. These I love because they're completely waterproof and they're insulated. If you're like me and you get out in the cold for even a second and your hands just stop working, uh, those are a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty sweet. Some Eskimo stuff. Yeah, I was just Fuel caps, stuff for the shacks, the power head covers, same thing on the Ion, battery bags. Extensions. Uh, this stuff's new. I'm not sure how well this is going to do, but I thought it looked interesting. So, these is a system you can mount this in your shack. Mm -hmm. These move around and then they make different accessories that you can clip to it. So, there's like a rod holder, uh, a rattle reel. Uh, this is like a little workstation, jig rod holders, cup holders, stuff like that. So, it's just a system where you can. And I'm sure they'll come out with more over time. Mm. This one attaches to the side of oh, a that's cool. five gallon bucket. Nice. And then you can, I'll probably try this, like going yeah, out yeah, smell definitely. digging. I'll just hook that inside of my bucket and then run the oh, rod Oh, that's going to be awesome for a rod holder. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, sweet. Otis caught the metal shelving out there, the piece that goes into the ground, I mean the floor. He tried to attack Winston and he caught that and flipped his side around. The hole? No, like the, the metal shelving out there by the trailer. It was sticking out oh. and he hooked his That's back end outside. just right. Ooh, was he yeah. all right? He, he felt it. Those, they're like cut with the torch on the end of them. Jeez. Depending on what end you hit. <laughs> Jeez. And this is just kind of the jig wall. We got a variety of jigs. Swedish pimples, the old tried and true. These have been real popular, the Stignos. You're gonna see this guy in a video here yeah. shortly. <laughs> that Sean's <laughs> killer. <laughs> it worked, it did the trick that day. Yeah. Had to try a few different. You gotta... This is real, I like this one a lot. I yeah. use that for all species. Yeah, these are good little jigs. These have been real popular. Then we got, uh, just some, these are new. I got this here. Oh, the PKs, yeah, yep. my buddies at West Grand love those. Yeah, I've heard of, uh, I've heard of them, people talking about them. Castmaster. These are a lot of like little panfish jigs. Mm -hmm. The airplane jig. This is a good tow jig. Oh, yeah. That's kind of a classic. Haley jigs. Uh, I got a lot more of these buckshot rattle spoons mm -hmm. coming. We got a little rattler in them. Those I ordered and they were on back order. They were actually shipped, so he should be here probably today. Oh, great. Uh, these, some guy showed up last year and told me I had to sell them. And, uh, 
he did not work for them. He just said, I can't stop catching fish with these things, that's, and I have nowhere to buy them. That's pretty good. So he said he was trying to reach a store that would reach out to them and order them, stock them. We did pretty well with them, so uh, we got some more of these coming too. But they, Did the guy come back? Um, I'm not sure. She's in the store, so I don't get to see. <laughs> uh, he had to get, pull me off the bench to uh, make this request. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hold of the company that owns Rattle Trap. Oh, nice. And we're getting a bunch of rattle traps yeah. into yeah, after yeah, yeah. watching Joe catch all kinds of fish on it. <laughs> <That's sweet. laughs> so, so this is all of, stuff that just, works and works locally. Yeah, yeah. It's more like I don't have a lot of jigs. Yeah. You know, we don't carry everyone, but we've got stuff that we've got experience with um, that we kind of recommend to people. Beautiful. And you got some jig rods this year? Yeah, a variety of jigs. Um, we had a bunch of these. They were kind of hanging on the wall. The old ugly sticks. I brought in a bunch of different ones. We've always just kind of carried HT uh, cheap combos. Yep. Um, Joe got me into chicken. Oh, you, you did pick up a. a yeah. Nice. Combos. Joe's, Joe gave me one of these as an early birthday present. Um, this is the one he told me I had to have. So yeah. He gave me one. Is that the one I gave you? No, <laughs> no, that one I put a reel on. It's ready to go. We just need ice. But. Nice, and you got the you got another one here, a bigger yep, size. Yeah, we got the forty. The heavy. forty heavy, yeah. So a lot of guys um, like that pike and togue fishing. Right. So yeah, we brought those in. So we got a lot more variety on on chick poles this year. We kind of we got a little bit of higher class. Like these are Fenwicks um, with the Peluga reels. Oh, nice. Yeah. A little pricey, but uh, but you're covering all your bases. Right, price range. You, you can get you can come in and get a twenty-five dollar jig pole yeah. combo, or you can get a hundred twenty dollar jig pole combo. It's kind of what do you what are you looking to do? Yeah. So this year we decided we'd um, you can thank Joe for this, and he's gonna have to explain it to you a little more <laughs> because I don't really know much about it. All I know is I went fishing with Joe. He whipped this thing out, and I was a complete game changer on my perspective of how these things work, but. This thing is not cheap. It's 2800 bucks, but it comes with everything you need um, for going on the ice. You can use them in your boat too, but that's a live scope. So that's what you always see Joe using. And you this can literally the same thing. watching the fish swim around down there and it's incredible. And we also got some Striker Plus for ice bundles. These, I don't know too much about it. I don't have any experience with them. I do, I have one of these fish finders in my boat. I haven't used it a lot, but I don't have the ice bundle part of it. They're pretty economical and I've heard a lot of good things about it. So, you know, I was bringing the live scope in uh, when I saw Joe using it and we got two. I'm hoping there's one left <laughs> over and I get to keep it, but I figured we'd get a couple uh, more economical versions for people looking to get into some jigging with electronics. And what, what's the launch of that? I got it. What kind of cake? Oh, <laughs> oh you're a ham for the camera, aren't you? Jump, 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 jump. Dave, what's your favorite kind of pizza? <laughs> He's never ate a piece of pizza in his really? life. Really? Good for you. I've had a bite. So out here, um, this is just more bait tank. This is all just storage. Um, they're working on a big yellow bean order right now, so we're just kind of cranking those out. They get all special labeling. We got a price tag, all this stuff for them. This is our shipping department. We actually um, put all their price tags right on oh, wow. here. So. That was something they came up with a few years ago that we were so excited about. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean's that. gonna take you through what happens if you guys order something off his website or you call an order in. So we get an order, it auto prints on the website. We get this, you know, if we come in in the morning, there's a stack of them, we go find them all. And then we come in, and this is, we spend all summer filling these racks. So this place looks altogether different in the summertime. There's um, Jackie. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> like over here, this is all, you can see in the floor, these are all racks, hanging racks. And there's some more down there that are still up. We take them down in the winter just to free up space. But 
we have like 6,000 pieces of wood in limbo Whoa. every week. So it's just kind of a, they come here, they get the finish put on them, and then those down there come down. These get moved down, so they get to try for another week. So you get about two weeks of cure time before they get handled again. And it's just a constant rotation Whoa. from the end of March until uh, we finished that whole process about the end of September this year. So Whoa. this thing, I mean, a month ago it was chock full all the way to the ceiling. This was stuff we've pulled down for wholesale orders. Basically it's come down, but we get all the frames ready. We get all the flags ready, the reels ready, all the parts and pieces. So everything's ready to go. And we're just build the order because as we talked about earlier, there's so many combinations we could pre-build a million traps and the next guy orders one and there's a pretty good chance we're gonna have to change a flag or a reel on it. But we get to a point where we were like three to four minutes from a finished trap here. So you come over, this one's for a 526 inch standard gun stuff. It'd be this stain here. We kind of separ every, separate everything by type. So this part here is all 26 standards. This right here is cross stuff. Then we got 26 4 inch in the middle there's 20 inch stuff and then the, all the 31 inch big bob stuff's down on the end you come here grab the five frames they'll end up going to a cart over here i'm not going to grab them now because they're already there we don't want to send two of them <laughs> and uh they'll end up going in this cart where then they head to dave and ethan and they're doing all the trippers and the end clips so it's kind of like a assembly line. Yeah. One guy's focused on one job. So they get them all and they're just getting them to this point. So the trap's got an end, end clip and a trimmer. We uh, live by cardboard around here. There's no such thing as a bad piece of cardboard in the <laughs> And from there, it all runs down. So all this stuff is, has been prepped. It's, it's designated for an order, whether it be a wholesale order or a uh, website order. From here, we come down, and then these are just all pre-made flags, sorted by size. So come all the way down. It's just different varieties. And they're all pre-made. Reels, all pre-made. Highlight Dave's day, the mail's in. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, all the different colors. And both sides. These are all in one. Just lined, ready to go. Well. So, when it comes to this end of the bench, we grab the colors you picked and we're just throwing them on and getting them to a finished trap. So. so, these are built to order then? Yeah. Built to an order. Everything's built to order all by hand. So, once you reach this part, they're finished trap. They head back down there to Casey and she's gonna box them and nice. send them out to you. So. so pretty much the only stuff you guys are building ahead of time is what's out there hanging in the retail store. Right, the retail store is the only stuff ready to go. And like you said there, we can kind of grab stuff and, and come back and swap stuff and around. And just completely if customize it if somebody wants a different flyer. And, and also like, depending where we're at, like most everything here is designated for an order right now, mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna pull out of it. But there'll be times where like, you know, we'll be all caught up on wholesale and we'll just start prepping stuff. So there'll be traps sitting here with trippers and end clips on them. Yeah. And you can come in, even if there's nothing in the store, and we can come out back and finish off your seven nice. traps in 10 to 15 minutes. Nice. So it's like, you know, going to a restaurant and waiting for your food to come in. That's awesome. I'll start at the beginning, way, way before me. I wasn't even born yet. Um, 1979, Jack started Jack Traps. He was like, uh, when he was a little kid, loved to fish. His family always fished. They were going out uh, fishing every weekend, ice fishing, regular fishing, didn't matter. He just loved to fish. So he couldn't really find ice traps that didn't have problems. They would, trippers would fall off, or reels would break, or flags wouldn't go off. They'd pick them up at the end of the day, fish on it, no flag, whatever. You know, they were, it was just kind of all hodgepodge homemade traps back then. He started, he was always tinkering on them, trying to make them work better, or whatever. He decided he was gonna try and make his own trap that would last, basically came up with pretty close to what the jack trap is today. I mean, there's been a lot of changes in what materials are used and so on and so forth, but the, the original design is no different. His 
that's the first five right there. Oh, no way, really? They don't look very different. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> they, they, back then, they were, you know, cut up pallets, and yeah. he was working at this place called Dumont's here in Monmouth, and they would let him use the machinery after hours when he, he was off the clock, and he could punch the reels out and, and wow. make his hardware. And he was just kind of doing it as a side gig, you know, sell them to his friends, or, you know, he might drive around in Christmas time and sell them to hardware stores and stuff trying to make some extra money. It didn't really get big. He got a back injury, like early 90s. Um, and he, he couldn't do what he was doing anymore. And he decided to go into this full time, uh, working out of his basement still. But right around that time, you know, he got, he just started reaching out, trying to get people to take him on wholesale. It was all wholesale back then. Mm -hmm. Like, unless you were going in his basement and having a beer with him, you weren't, it wasn't like coming to the store. You. He was selling them to Audettes in town and going to Huzzies and sending them to... When he got in with Beans, that's when things took off. You know, he, get, he reached a point they're doing 2,000 traps a year or whatever, you know. And now he's he started renting a building in Manchester. He would do all the polyurethane work there, bring everything back to his house, and he was still building and shipping and all that stuff right out of his basement. Probably early thousands, mid 2000s, I believe around 05, 06. He moved in this building. His um, cousin Rick actually owned it. Uh, and it was main ornamental. They built post caps. They were in here. Since then, they moved to green, and then now they've been sold out. And main ornamental isn't main anymore. But, <laughs> but this, and, uh, this was an old dairy farm before that. So that's kind of how Tim came to be in this building. And then so now he's gone from his basement to 6,000 square feet of retail and manufacturing capacity. So. The store was actually in that first room on the right when you come in the hallway when he first got and this was nothing, you know, so he's he put all this together. The the benches got built and you know, there was the electrical was here but all the, the racks and these walls and the counter and you know, all this stuff had to get um, put in here. And so it's just kind of accumulated over time to what it is. Me, I just grew up ice fishing. It's I didn't do a lot of open water fishing. My my family we, we ice fished all winter, that's what we did. You know, was, I remember, I lived in China, still do. We'd be out on the lake and it was just like 50 people all standing around three or four ice shacks and that's where we were every weekend. Fast forward, I went to Erskine Academy. I ended up uh, moving to California after that, went to college, I was out there. Went to school for business, hated the city. Just wanted to get back in the woods. Two weeks after graduation, I jumped in my car and I was driving back to Maine. Got here, I had no clue what I was going to do with myself, you know. I went to school for a business, I'd, I'd been working at an investment firm in L.A. And there's none of that around here, so. Um, I could do accounting, stuff like that, but it, it was hard to find a job. It was, anywhere I went, it was like you were either overqualified or I, it was just hard, you know. And there wasn't a lot of options for it. I tried getting analyst jobs at Beans and CMP, stuff like that, but. I mean, it wasn't anything I really wanted to do. I was just, I needed something to do with it. I went about nine months, no work. Candace uh, bought me a set of traps for Christmas. And I'd been using, my great-grandfather like made traps. I got probably 40 or 50 of them. Same idea, you know. You go pick them up at the end of the day, it's fish air. And <laughs> you, you didn't get a flag all day long. <laughs> but, so, Candace bought me that set of traps. I was mad at her. I wasn't working, she was waitressing, and I couldn't believe that she spent that much money on a set of ice fishing traps. And I wasn't working at the time. I went, I fished nine days straight, and every time that flag went up, I had a fish on the end of it. And after those nine days, I said, that's what this is, you know, <laughs> that's why these are what they are, it's the reason. And I started following Jack Traps on Facebook. I saw they were, um, looking to hire a manager and I just applied um, I came in met with Tim so backtrack a little bit found out going into 2012 uh, he got esophageal cancer um, they caught it early luckily he was on a trip up to Long Lake and they got a call his doctor said you need to get home now came home cut his esophagus out long recovery time but they got it all so um, he couldn't really work in the capacity here like he had before that. And they were looking for somebody to kind of come in and take over that part of it. 
<coughs> and along comes me. So uh, I sat down. At the same time, he was kind of looking to sell, if if it would work. Um, I came in, interviewed. I thought everything went well, um, and I actually put together like a business plan of things I would do going forward to grow the business and all. So I put it. Uh, then I got an email back that they decided to go a different route. Now, now I've since learned that they had a potential buyer and they were working through that. So I'd made this business plan. I hadn't sent. I just sent it to them. I said, "Here you go." You know, came up with this, but you know, thank you and whatever. Plan fell through. Next thing I know, I was up to Chamberlain. My family would go on a fishing trip up there every year, and I got home. I got a package on my doorstep, and it was like a single trap box. There was a little note in it from Tim. It said, if you're still looking for a job, give me a call. Here's a, here's a lucky trap. <laughs> so I called, still looking for work, and came in. And I just could see it, the potential in it. You know, I, I like to work with my hands and be proud of what you're doing, make a quality product. And when he started, it was 12 bucks an hour. And like I said, I just come off of it business economics and accounting degree at UCLA, working at an investment banking firm with billionaires. And I could have stayed there and had a great job, but I didn't care. I was coming home. And we've just kind of grown from there, you know. Um, and then going in, it was always kind of a plan that I would eventually buy the place. You know, Tim was in his mid-60s and looking to get out of it. He's when you get into this business and you love to fish, you don't get to fish anymore. So he wanted to get on the ice doing that kind of stuff. So that would have been 2019. We finally got to a point where all the stars aligned and uh, we made the deal and I took over. And Tim was gonna kind of lay back, retire. He'd still come in here and dub around. And it came to be that following spring. So spring of 2020. Um, his cancer came back in his bladder. And then from there, he went downhill really quick. Uh, so probably it was October, he was gone after that. So don't wait, <laughs> don't, you know, if you want to do something, do it. Uh, that's what that shows, but he, um, he'd be really proud of what we're doing. Uh, it's an honor to really carry on the, the product and the name, so. We just keep making the best traps we can every day. <laughs> That's all we can do. So. For sure.